Mr. Secretary, uh, you weren't uh, able to uh, read your entire uh, statement, but I think uh, your conclusion, you know, which is both thoughtful and uh, frightening, deserves to be on the oral record as well as in the written record, and it does lead to my one question. You say that fundamental is this. Sometimes you can do almost everything right and still suffer grievous losses from terrorist attacks. The recent train bombings in Spain demonstrate this tragic but inescapable fact. Spanish authorities were well prepared. Spanish Spain's highly capable security forces, forces were on high alert and security had been increased across the country. In fact, several weeks earlier, they had apprehended terrorists with a truckload of explosives. Nonetheless, and despite all their best efforts and all their precautions, Spain still suffered these horrific attacks that produced such terrible casualties. Before this war is won, there will be more such attacks. Now, the fact that we don't like to talk about uh, in public uh, you know, you know, for fear of what consequences it might have is the fact that we have now gone two and one half years in the United States uh, without an Islamic extremist successful terrorist attack here. We may have prevented some, but in a sense, nothing has happened. I'd like you to give me your opinion to the extent that you feel able to do so of the reasons for that, how much of it is blind luck, how much of it is the fact that we've hardened targets, how much of it is the fact or the proposition that we have more effective intelligence and uh, prevention than we did before 9-11. How much of it is due to the fact that we have attacked the sources, the, the physical sources of it? And how much of it is due to the fact that all of these things together may simply not have ended terrorism, obviously it did not, but simply displaced it to Indonesia, to Morocco, to Turkey, to Saudi Arabia, uh, to Spain, to places uh, uh, in, in which the targets are easier and softer? Sir, we are still vulnerable, and, and we should accept that, and we'll always be vulnerable as long as we are a, a free and open society. But we have done a number of things that I hope uh, have deterred attacks, made it harder for people to plot against the United States, uh, and have perhaps scared them into thinking, well, we wouldn't be as successful as we might have been a couple of years ago. Creation of the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, the manner in which we took the tip-off database that uh, Ms. Gorelick spoke about and have now used it to create a much larger database. Uh, and we're pulling all the FBI, CIA, uh, State Department databases into one system. The fact that uh, we have changed our visa policy significantly, we're now starting to fingerprint people coming into the country and getting a better ID on them. The fact that we have uh, done a lot of work on our borders the fact that we have the Transportation Security Administration that does a, a, a better job of looking at who's coming into the country at our airports and other places of uh, entry and points of entry. So I hope that these defensive measures we have taken are deterring attacks and are giving people who might come after us pause. Is there not a better place that we can go and conduct one of these terrible attacks uh, and make the same point to the world about uh, our philosophy and our, our evil in, intent. And maybe that's why they have gone elsewhere. I think it also illustrates why nobody is immune and we all have to work together. And so I hope that as a result of the attack in Spain, the attack in Bali, the attack in Riyadh, the attack in so many other places in the world, will pull the civilized world together and do, cause us to do a better job of sharing intelligence information, law enforcement information, financial cooperation, and direct action against terrorist organizations. But I can't give you a, a measure for each one of these steps, uh, uh, Mr. Gordon. It's it just n not possible, uh, and we're still vulnerable. A nation as large as ours, fairly open, and we can't shut down our openness. We cannot be so afraid that we don't let anybody into our country. It's costing us now we don't let students come to our universities uh, because we're concerned or they don't want to come to our universities because they, they are, are afraid of the difficulty of getting a visa, even if they're fully qualified for visa, or the harassment they sometimes feel at our airports. So we have to secure the homeland, but we also have to remain an open nation or the terrorists win. But I hope that all of the efforts the President has taken over the last couple of years have contributed to our
deterrent effect against terrorist activity. So you feel that to a certain extent there has been genuine deterrence, a we, reduction we have, in it, but also a significant degree of displacement? Yeah, well, deterrence for sure. We have made it a lot harder for people to come and move freely about our country, and they know we're looking for them. We know that the, the, the policies the President has put in place for the purpose of finding these folks before they get us. With respect to displacement, we know we have uh, pretty much uh, crippled their ability to work in Afghanistan. I can't say that we've gotten them all. There may be some uh, remnants left. But we also know they're trying to recreate themselves elsewhere. That's why what Secretary Rumsfeld is doing with his uh, footprint of our military forces and what Director Tennant is doing and will speak to you about are so important. We've got to chase them and find them wherever they surface in these other places in the world. Rich? Probably the best deterrent, Senator, in addition to those the Secretary has mentioned, is about the 500 al-Qaeda that have been wrapped up by Pakistan and the dozens who have been killed and arrested by the Saudis, particularly after their May 12th bombings. That's part of deterrence, too. You've got to have the sharp edge of the, or the pointy edge of the spear. And just, just, to, just to put a PS on that, I mean, some of these organizations, particularly al-Qaeda, thought they were getting a free ride in certain places. They've now discovered there's no free ride in Saudi Arabia, and you see what President Musharraf's been doing in recent days in that battle that's taking place uh, up in the tribal areas. And they know they're going to be engaged, and you, and you can be sure they're going to be engaged by Spanish authorities. And so they know there's no longer any uh, impunity associated with their actions, and the world hopefully is coming together. We must not let the success of some of these actions, such as the Spanish uh, disaster, uh, cause us to back away from the campaign against terrorism. It's cause, cause us to redouble our efforts.